Professor Dave here. Let's learn about lipids. He knows a lot about the science stuff. Professor Dave explains. As we continue our survey of biomolecules, we arrive at lipids. Lipids include things like fats, oils, and steroids, and the key characteristic that defines them is that they are largely nonpolar, composed predominantly of long hydrocarbon chains or ring systems. And unlike the two types of polymers we've discussed, lipids are usually not big enough to be classified as macromolecules. Let's take a look at some different types of lipids. First, triacyl glycerols, or TAGs. These are molecules with three ester groups, and examples include peanut oil, corn oil, butter, and lard. Tags that are liquid at room temperature are called oils, and if they're solid, they're called fats. These molecules can differ in the type of acyl groups they possess, which is this portion of the molecule, which will always be a hydrocarbon chain of some length. If these ester groups are hydrolyzed, meaning a hydroxide attacks each carbonyl, kicking off this portion of the molecule, we get glycerol and three fatty acids. They're called fatty acids because they are carboxylic acids, but they also have long nonpolar hydrocarbon tails, which can vary depending on the tag the fatty acid is derived from. Most of the time, this tail is unbranched and contains an even number of carbons. If it contains all carbon-carbon single bonds, this would be a saturated fatty acid because it contains the maximum number of hydrogen atoms possible. If there is a double bond, it's an unsaturated fatty acid. Sometimes there are two or three double bonds, which would make it a polyunsaturated fatty acid. In naturally occurring fats, the double bonds are almost always cis. When we hear about trans fats, these are the ones that seem to be harmful to the human body, as their linear shape gives them a higher melting point, so they are more likely to remain solid and more difficult to metabolize. These are associated with cardiovascular disease. In general, saturated fatty acids have higher melting points than unsaturated ones because the double bonds restrict rotation and therefore cause a kink in the chain, which interferes with crystal packing. Saturated fatty acids can pack neatly and maximize van der Waals attractions. That's why butter, which is fully saturated, is a solid at room temperature, whereas olive oil, which has a degree of unsaturation in one of its hydrocarbon chains, is less able to form an orderly solid lattice and is therefore a liquid at room temperature. An omega-3 fatty acid is one where the third carbon from the end of the chain is participating in a double bond. When we talk about hydrogenated vegetable oils, these are derived by hydrogenating some of the double bonds in polyunsaturated fats. One problem with partial hydrogenation is that it can sometimes isomerize double bonds, turning cis into trans, resulting in trans fats, which, as we said, should be avoided. In general, fats like tags are used as energy storage. When these are metabolized in our bodies, they release twice as much energy as carbohydrates, since there are so many carbon-hydrogen bonds. Furthermore, polysaccharides like glycogen only provide energy for about a day, whereas the fats we store that make up around 20% of our body mass provide long-term energy storage, which would keep us alive for up to a month without any food intake if necessary. Still, there is much discussion about how much saturated fat and unsaturated fat should be in our diet, but we will have to examine that another day. Another interesting aspect of fatty acids is that when the carboxyl group is deprotonated to form the sodium salt, you get soap molecules, which have a polar head and a nonpolar tail. These work by forming micelles in solution where many soap molecules orient themselves with the negatively charged carboxylate groups all facing outwards to maximize ion-dipole interactions with water molecules, while the hydrophobic hydrocarbon chains point inwards by exclusion, making van der Waals interactions with one another. Any nonpolar dirt or grease, which is normally not water-soluble, can get trapped inside and will then wash away with the micelle, which is water-soluble. That's why washing your hands with just water alone won't do anything, but add some soap and the dirt gets transported away in little spheres of soap molecules. 
Let's discuss another type of lipid, the terpenes and the terpenoids. These are polymers made up of repeating isoprene units, which is this 5-carbon diene. Here we can see myrcene, a terpene consisting of two isoprene units. Farnesine, found in apples, has three. The units can be linked to form rings, such as in limonene, which is found in lemons. These can get much larger, such as with beta-carotene, comprised of eight isoprene units, which is found in various plants and fruits. Terpenoids are similar to terpenes, but they contain oxygen atoms, such as with menthol, found in peppermint. Those are just a few types of lipids found in our bodies. Let's continue with lipids as we take a look at steroids. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials, and as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.